Hello everyone, it's Foo here, and today Billie Eilish has some competition because I'm the bad guy. I will be talking about Scovillain. I love this Pokemon. This is the new and only grass fire type in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I know a lot of people don't really like its design, but I love it. I love that they threw away any attempt at making it aesthetically pleasing and just went with a real meanie. A two-headed bell pepper monster with seeds for teeth and weird tongues. I love it so much. Unfortunately, I don't love its stat spread so much. It has high attack and special attack when really it only needed high special attack. And then it's pretty frail and not so fast. If you swapped its HP and attack stat or its speed and attack stat, this Pokemon will be so much better. But unfortunately, these are the stats we're stuck with. Its abilities do mitigate that a little bit. So Chlorophyll doubles its speed in Sun, which is really great. Or you can embrace Chaos and just go with Moody to get random stat boosts and drops each turn. I suggest that Chlorophyll is probably more consistent, but if you're the type of villain that likes to watch the world burn, then you might want to try Moody. I think this set is the set that most people will come up with when they look at Scovillain. It is like the quintessential Sun Sweeper because it has Chlorophyll, which boosts its speed in Sun. It has fire type stab moves that get a power boost in the Sun and you can use fully charged stab solar beams in the sun. So you're throwing off extremely powerful moves very quickly. I suggest using Terra Blast with Terra Rock typing because that gives you good defensive Terra typing. You resist flying and poison type moves that you're usually weak to, and it gives you a way to deal with opposing fire types. But that's not the main topic of today's video. Today we are cooking with heat because we are looking at Scovillain's signature move, Spicy Extract. This is one of my favorite things about Scarlet and Violet. I love this move so much. It boosts the target's attack stat by two stages and drops their defense stat by two stages. So it's really weird because it's like a buff and a debuff all in one, but it has so much potential and I can't wait to show you. And I think the best way to do that is probably just to jump into some battles showcasing the team that I built all around this move. So in this first battle, I'm going up against a rain team. So my opponent is going to lead off with their Amoongus and Palafin, as I'm going to lead off with my Murkrow and Scovillain. And we have a potential hero versus villain storyline going on here, which I can't wait to see how that turns out. My opponent's going to switch out first turn to get their Palaf Palafin's ability activating and go into their Pelipper to get that rain up. And that would also mitigate any fire type damage that I would go for into their Amoongus. This first turn, I'm going to set up Tailwind with my Prankster Murkrow. It goes first and just means that I can be really fast straight away. And I'm just going to go for a spicy extract into the Amoongus to increase its attack, which shouldn't do too much because most of them are special attackers, and decrease its defense, which is the main thing because that will allow me to do more damage into it. But the opponent actually switches out their Amoongus this turn, as I'm just going to actually target into that slot again. We have Palafin, zero to hero coming in, hero coming to save the day, but unfortunately it's going to get sprayed with my spicy extract to increase its attack stat, which is massive, and decrease its defense stat, allowing my Murkrow's foul play to one-shot it. That's because Murkrow's foul play is based off the opponent's attack stat, which in that moment was massive, and they had like no defense stat either. So it's a one shot and we can take out the hero. There are no heroes in this town. Unfortunately, the Pelipper hits a hurricane and it confuses my Scovillain, taking it down to its focus sash. I'm really hoping that I don't hit myself in confusion next turn because I will just take myself out, which would not be ideal. The opponent brings in their Arcanine so that they can get some Intimidates going. And uh, it's kind of, it's kind of fine because I'm not using my attack stat so the Intimidate doesn't really make any difference. I'm going to make a fire play though. I'm going to switch into my Dragapult and I'm going to go for a spicy extract into my own Dragapult. Fortunately, I don't get confused. Why this is so cool is that Dragapult's clear body ability prevents the defense drop from spicy extract. So I just get a plus two. It's like just giving your ally a plus two attack, which is really great. Unfortunately, my... Go, Scovillain gets picked off with a Snarl there, and fortunately my Dragapult does dodge a Hydro Pump, although I would have resisted, but it would have done a lot of damage. Now I'm going to switch in my Shiny Bombardier, which I love. This Pokemon is super cool. 
as a Dragon Darts comes out and does a ton of damage to both of my Pokemon. I couldn't believe how much that did. Um, all thanks to the Scovillain. And I can actually pick off the Arcanine this turn with my Bombardier's Foul Play, which is Black Glasses boosted. Bombard Shiny Bombardier looks so cool. I think it's a really classy shiny. Love the red eyeshadow on the red Petty. Really, really cool. So now I can bring in my other dark flying bird, Murkrow. Have these two birds together at the end of the battle. Can they close it out? My opponent's going to bring in their Amoongus again. Um, so I'm going to go for a taunt into the Amoongus here with my Bombardier to really shut it down as I go for a foul play into the Pelipper with the hopes of taking it out. And you can see that Amoongus protects, so I don't get the taunt off there. Unfortunately, Foul Play does not take it out. My Black Glasses Bombardia would have been able to take out the Pelipper because it would have just got that Black Glasses boost. Uh, but unfortunately, the Protect with the Amoongus was a really good play. I'm going to go for a taunt into the Amoongus this turn so that it can't do any Sporing shenanigans. I really need to shut it down because I think Spore is really the only way that I could potentially lose this. And obviously the Rage Powder does redirect my Foul Play away into the Amoongus, so I can't take out the Pelipper this turn. But they do miss their move, um, which I think was kind of important, but maybe not game-changing, because the opponent... I, I would have still taken out the Pelipper that turn, and the opponent is then only left with their Clear Smog Amoongus, which, as you can see, is doing absolutely no damage. It would have had to take my Murkrow down from max HP to nothing, and it's an Inviolite Murkrow, relatively bulky. So I think I would have won that one regardless. But I love that battle so much for the hero versus villain storyline. The villain wins out, and then we get to power up our Dragapult with a massive spicy extract. So it really shows off kind of the synergy on the team. Now I want to show a very different matchup with this team going up against a Trick Room team. So my opponent is going to lead with their Trick Room setup of Gothitelle and Amoongus, as I'm going to lead with my Choice Scarf, Annihilate, and my Bombardier. Now Choice Scarf, Annihilate with Final Gambit is super common at the moment. It's got a massive HP pool, and Final Gambit can just delete one of the opponents. But this is usually a bad matchup for Annihilate because Amoongus can use Rage Powder and redirect Final Gambit away, and Amoongus has more HP than Annihilate, so it can actually survive the Final Gambit. But as you can see, I'm Terra Grass type, and Grass types are immu immune to Powder moves, including Rage Powder, which means I don't get redirected away from Amoongus and can just take out Gothitelle. So that's obviously a play that the opponent did not see coming at all, and it just goes to show how ridiculously ridiculously broken <laughs> Annihilate is. Like, there's so little counterplay, it's really hard to play around. You have to be... It's not really hard to play around. You just have to be very aware of what it can do. As you can see, that allows me to get the Taunt onto the Amoongus, making it pretty much dead weight, because a Taunted Amoongus is a bad Amoongus, as the opponent's going to bring out a Baxcalibur. So I can kind of ignore Amoongus right now, because it's not going to be doing anything, and I can just focus in on that Baxcalibur, Baxcalibur, which has a really high attack stat, so that's pretty tempting. I'm going to go for... Oh, they bring in the Torkoal, and that sets up the Sun, which actually activates Chlorophyll, but I don't really think it has any impact on this match, because the turn order is probably the same regardless. I go for the spicy extract, increase their attack stat even more, decrease their defense stat, and you know what's coming. The foul play is a one-shot. Just a note on how powerful that combination is, spicy extract basically means that foul play will deal four times as much damage as it usually would. It's like a belly drum for the foul play user. Absolutely insane. So, so even against Pokemon that resist the foul play, they can get one shot after a spicy extract. A Hydreigon can get one shot by foul play. It's nuts. It's absolutely stupid. So now uh, my opponent brings in their Amoongus. They can redirect again, but fortunately because Scovillain is grass type, it again is immune to the Rage Powder, and I can get a powerful Sun Boosted Overheat off into the Torkoal. Scovillain does actually have quite a lot of bulk, so it's not max uh, special attack. I could potentially do more into the Torkoal if I did run max special attack, but I do like having some bulk on my Scovillain because it is really more of a utility Pokemon. But that damage from Overheat was really important because it just means that Scovillain and Bombardier take a little bit less damage and yeah, it's, it's better. And I can actually get the Taunt into the Amoongus again, so again, it's not going to be doing very much. 
Right now, I target down the Torkoal, and unfortunately, that wasn't really the play because they do a really good protect here. I wasn't sure what kind of a Torkoal it was. It could have been like a, a Choice Specs item. It would have done more damage though, so maybe I should have known my calcs a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the Protector was really good. I think I would have probably taken it out with a Spicy Extract Foul Play there, so the Protector was really great, and they're able to take out my Scovillain. So the Foul Play will definitely not be as strong an option going forward. I now can bring in my last Pokemon, which is my Dragapult. And again, I'm not able to spicy extract my Dragapult here, so we're just going to have to see if I can play out this end game. I'm going to go for Dragon Darts because while I do need to take out the Torkoal, which is the biggest threat, I need to be getting damage on that Amoongus because I want to take it out before the Taunt wears off. You can see Foul Play is not doing very much damage there, but if a spicy extract had gone into that Torkoal, it would have been a completely different story. Now the Torkoal gets to fire off a Terra Boosted Flamethrower, which is going to do all the damage to Bombardia, and Bombardia is going to faint at this stage, so it's all down to Dragapult. And looking at the damage output, I was really disappointed. I thought that Dragapult would be doing more, and this is because it's actually a bold Dragapult, I realized that after this match. It's got a minus attack nature, so it should be doing significantly more damage. Torkoal would already have fainted, <laughs> but that's not the case. So now I'm in a sticky situation to close out this match, all because I had forgotten to give Dragapult the Jolly Mint, which has been rectified by now, I may add. So the Flamethrower comes out, it does a lot of damage to Dragapult. That's so much damage. And I really have to hope that some miracle can happen right now, because the Amoongus is going to run out of its taunt and it can now redirect potentially. The opponent actually makes a, a misplay here because they protect with Torkoal. They probably don't know the mechanics of Dragon Darts. If you protect, both darts are redirected into the other target, which is great because that allows me to take out the Amoongus and then I can take out the Torkoal on the following turn. As I said, this Endgame would not have been so close if I had just given my blooming Dragapult the Jolly Mint, but I've done that now, so anyway, that's going to be the battle. I thought that this one was cool just to show you how you can play against different um, different matchups differently. The Annihilate's really great for helping out with redirection and also helping out against Trick Room. The opponent does actually disconnect there, which I found really hilarious because it was the end of the match anyway. So I'll go into a bit more of a team discussion now to tell you why I've come up with what I came up with. Obviously, I was building all around Spicy Extract, and I thought that the most obvious synergy there would be Foul Play. As I said, it gives you four times damage boost, so you can take out all sorts with that. And the immediate foul play user that sprung to mind was Murkrow, which is a running around everywhere at the moment. Prankster Tailwind is so powerful, and if you can't beat them, join them. The next Pokemon that I knew I wanted on this team was Dragapult because of the clear body synergy, as you saw in one of the battles. It just gets really, really powerful, and because it has such high base speed anyway, this Pokemon can run away with the games. The next Pokemon, I wanted a Clear Amulet user because Clear Amulet will prevent the stat drops from Spicy Extract, so Sizzle with the Clear Amulet is great. It means that I can Spicy Extract it, it means that it can ignore Intimidates, and it really helps with the Fairy matchups, which otherwise would be a bit of a problem with all the Dark types and Dragon types on the team. So that's really, really important for Scizor. I decided to add Bombardia for two reasons. It gives me another Foul Play user. I have kind of four move slot syndrome on the Murkrow, and so this basically just solves that by having a second Murkrow, kind of. Uh, but Bombardia gives me some other options. I've got the Black Glasses on there, so it's a slightly more offensive option. And it has Big Pecs, which means that its defense can't be dropped. So again, it's another combination with Spicy Extract. You can Spicy Extract into Bombardia for some really powerful Sucker Punch setup. And also, I just really like the shiny Bombardia. I think it's such a classy shiny. And the last Pokemon on the team, as you saw, was Annihilate. I said it's great into the Trick Room matchups. It helps with redirection. And it's a Pokemon that can help take out some Dark types, which otherwise are a big problem to this team because the Foul Play users can't touch Dark types. Dragapult really struggles with dark types, so Annihilate is really important there. In terms of team synergy, you definitely don't need both birds. I would suggest replacing one of them with Grimmsnarl. It can kind of perform the function of either of them as the prankster user with speed control in, in Scary Face or Thunder Wave, or as a Sucker Punch user, it does get foul play, 
but most importantly it gets spirit break because that can really help with opposing dark types so that would just really help with most matchups replacing one of them with grim snarl i just really like both of the birds and wanted to use them i hope that i gave you a lasting flavor of the spicy extract potential i think it's so so good i love this move so much i love scovillain so much so please try it out all that's left to be said is i've been Fu, you've been awesome and hopefully see you next time goodbye